economists would argue that debt is basically a tax on the poor. And I just kind of wanted to know, you know, from an economist standpoint, why that isn't right. And, you know, maybe relatedly why fiscal policy um, that involves creating large amounts of debt wouldn't, you know, usually that would create inflation. And inflation we think of as hurting the poor more than the rich because the poor have less money to actually buy things. Um, why, why, why is this not a system that would hurt the poor more rather than less? Well, so let's, I think, recognize that you can write a budget that results in a deficit that vastly improves life for the broad majority, including the poor, or you can write a budget that generates the same deficit in absolute terms, but serves a very different constituency, right? Benefits a very different constituency. In other words, not all deficits are gonna be created equal, even if they uh, result in the same addition to the national debt and so forth. So um, I just wonder if it might be okay for me to just very quickly um, make clear to everybody who's with us tonight what the deficit actually is, because that would so be many helpful. people don't know or uh, they conflate the deficit with the debt. And so uh, I like to try to you know, define my terms and maybe even with a, a simple example like I do in the book. So we've been taught to have a visceral reaction to the mm -hmm. idea of a government having a fiscal deficit. You say, oh my God, that's evidence of you know, mismanaging the, the nation's finances. You've done something wrong if the budget ends up in deficit. That's not true at all. We shouldn't think like that. So a, a government deficit simply means that the government is spending more dollars into the economy than it is subtracting away ma mainly by taxing, okay? So if the government spends $100 into the Canadian economy and it only taxes $90 out of people's hands, then by definition, it has left $10 somewhere in the economy. So now we start getting to your question, right? right. Who's benefiting from that right. deposit? Because every deficit is good for someone. The government deficit is, a, is nothing more than a financial contribution. It is a dollar contribution being made to some other part of the economy. The question is, for whom and for what purpose, right? What is the deficit doing? So now let's do the borrowing part. So, so far, let's say the government spends 100 in hiring people to repair infrastructure, build, you know, modernize, upgrade, uh, green infrastructure, whatever the case is. So you pay those folks. Now, some people lost their dollars because $90 were taxed away, but you left 10 extra dollars in somebody's hands. Somebody's got that, those dollars. Now they're gonna travel around the economy. There's people are gonna spend them and then they're gonna fall into somebody else's hands and then they can spend them and so forth, right? But when the government runs a deficit, it typically coordinates its deficit spending with bond sales. So now why should I do? I spend $100 into the economy, I tax $90 back out, I've made a $10 deposit, only now I say, well, I ran a deficit, so I'm gonna match up my deficit spending with what we call borrowing, and I'm gonna sell government bonds. So I've got 10 government bonds. Now I take the $10 back out of the economy and I replace those $10 with government bonds, which are interest-bearing currency, okay? That's an interest-bearing form of Canadian dollars. Now I've topped up somebody's bank account. I've taken away your non-interest-bearing currency, I gave you currency that pays interest. So now somebody's kind of lucky, right? Because they have a reward, they have an interest payment coming to them without needing to take on risk because it's a risk-free asset. So this is where the question of the borrowing and the debt becomes interesting because who holds those bonds? They're getting an interest payment. And if you're wealthy and you're able to invest significantly in government bonds, and those bonds happen to pay high rates of interest over time, well, it's a very nice subsidy to you. But again, there's no inherent reason that the deficit has to result in um, you know, ill effects for lower income people and only benefit higher income people. It depends on the kind of deficit you're running. Thank you.